Hello everyone. Today we start with the last topic of your AFS subject that is non-government organizations. Now, non-government organization NGO is not something new you are listening for the first time. There are several social organizations in the country which are to be registered with the government but they work for specific purposes which generally include social welfare or they work for the promotion of one particular culture in the society or they work for the upliftment of poor people in the society, mentally challenged people in the society or they work for the upliftment of particular religion in the country. Okay, UNICEF, CRY, SMILE Foundation, Being Human, all these are non-government organizations. However, what we are going to study in this chapter is how to make income and expenditure statement and balance sheet for a non-government organizations. Give this heading in your notebooks, all of you, non-government organizations and whatever important things I discuss in the chapter that you are supposed to write in your notebooks. Very first, let us understand the meaning and definition of NGO. So all of you write down in your notebooks. NGO, that is non-government organization, may be defined as an association having a definite cultural, educational, religious or social program. Okay, why they are formed? For a specific purpose which may be cultural. As I said, to promote a particular culture. Educational. Okay, educational means to promote education of poor people or a particular section or cadre of society. Religious, like we have religious institutions like RSS, Rashtriya, Seva Sangh. So they are for particular promotion of a particular religion. Or social programs. Registered with the central government is necessary. NGOs are also referred to as a non-profit organizations, NPOs sometimes because they don't have the profit motive. Their motive is one of these, cultural, educational, religious or social. NGOs are not owned by anyone and cannot distribute profits through the form of dividends as such. It is an association of persons in income tax. You would have studied AOP, BOI, body of individuals. So this is AOP, association. Okay, 10, 15, 20 people come together join together, form an NGO for a particular social, religious or any other cause. It is not owned by anyone. Anyone can exit, anyone can entry any time. And they don't distribute the profits. Whatever is the surplus earned in the organization, they use it for the purpose for which it is formed. Whatever profits they may earn from economic activities are reinvested or spent on appropriate non-profit activities. The typical sources of revenue for non-government organizations are how do they get the incomes they get it from donations fundings grants from unilateral or multilateral agencies membership fees miscellaneous sources and interest and dividends on investments so all of you can pause the video and write it down various well-known ngos in india include just some examples so that you exactly get the nature of it we have smile foundation in the country then we have Helpage India for the elder people in the country. Then we have CRY, Child Rights and You. And I give the example of Being Human and several other UNICEF, etc. are there. Okay. If you have not written, you can pause the video and write it down. I am moving further. Now, as I said, our purpose in this lecture is to understand the format of balance sheet and income and expenditure statement. There is no trick to remember all common sense. Just be attentive in this lecture to be able to remember the format here and here itself. Normally, balance sheet includes which two things? Normally, if you talk about sole proprietorship, partnership, we studied in past two, three years balance sheet a lot. So, which two sides does it include? Liabilities and assets. Here, instead of liabilities, what we have is sources of funds. Instead of liabilities, what we have is sources of funds, which Mean liabilities only sources of funds means from where we borrow the money, from where we get the money. So that is basically a liability only. And instead of assets, we have application of funds. Where do we use the funds? In buying the assets. So very first thing you have to remember is that balance sheet format will be making in vertical form. Income and expenditure also will be making in vertical form. Okay, not horizontal format. 
So one after the other will show about top and bottom uh, assets and liabilities kind of a thing. But instead of liabilities, what do you call here in the balance sheet? Sources of funds. Instead of assets, what do you call it in the balance sheet? Application of funds. Write down this diagram in the notebook, chart in the notebook, every one of you. Okay. Balance sheet will include two things, sources and application of funds. Now, which are the sources of funds? They are mainly categorized in two things. One is, okay, classified in two things. One is unrestricted funds. Now, unrestricted funds means you borrow the funds or you get the funds which are unrestricted. You can use it for any purpose you want. So, NGO can use, the non-government organization can use such funds for any purpose which they want. There are no legal restrictions, unrestricted funds. There are no legal restrictions or there are no restrictions by the fund provider. Okay, they come and donate, let us say, 1 lakh rupees to NGO and they give them the liberty. They can use 1 lakh for any purpose they want. Such funds are called unrestricted funds. The second category is restricted funds. So you all remember it this way. When we say sources of funds instead of liability, which are the two sources of funds? Unrestricted funds and restricted. What did I say? Unrestricted, no restrictions, no asterisk marks, no terms and conditions. When I say restricted funds, there are legal restrictions on it. The donor, the person giving the charity has conditions to use it. Suppose you say that I want my money to be used to distribute books to poor children only. Now the NGO cannot use the amount donated by you for any other purpose. Means they cannot use that money to supply ration to poor people. They cannot use they cannot use that money to give shawl to the poor people in winter. They cannot use that money for any other purpose because you have given the donation with the intention and with the terms and conditions mentioned that use it only to distribute books to poor children they are called restricted funds they are restriction you cannot use it the way you want okay okay what you want is the way it should be used you specify i want it that way only so if you mention while giving the donation how the funds are to be used for the ngo those funds will be called what restricted funds they cannot use it in the manner they wish so keep it in mind sources of funds two categories unrestricted and Restricted. Unrestricted, there are no restrictions. You can use it the way you want. Restricted, there are restrictions. And the donor or the person giving the donation mentions how the money is to be used or there are legal restrictions. Now, within unrestricted funds, what we have is very first corpus fund. Now, what is the very first item we used to have in the balance sheet on the liability side? I repeat, what is the very first item we used to have in the balance sheet on liability side? Capital. This corpus fund is like that capital. But we cannot call it as capital. Why? We studied in the beginning that there are no owners of NGO. The profit is not to be distributed as dividend. It is an association of people, promoters who start the NGO. When they start the NGO, they bring some petty amount, maybe 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 1 lakh, depending on their capacity. So they bring some amount in the beginning to start with. That amount is called corpus Fund. And that amount keeps on growing over a period of time. Okay, initially they bring in between when they require, they again bring that money. Suppose they find that they have to donate some 5 lakh rupees, 20,000 is shortfall. So those 10, 15 people who started, they will contribute to 2,000 rupees and again bring that funds in the business. I'm sorry, we cannot call it as business in the NGO. So corpus fund is just like capital. I repeat, corpus fund is just like capital. The amount which is brought by the promoters in the beginning or at the times of need. Second, we have general funds. General funds means which comes from income and expenditure account. Means in the first year it is zero. In the beginning it's zero. First year you do the activities. There is surplus generated that you transfer to general fund. You can use it for any purpose in the future years. Okay. So whatever is the surplus generated in income and expenditure account that is every year transferred to general fund. In the beginning, it's zero and it starts building up over the year's period of time. Then we have designated funds. Designated or they are also called earmarked. Means they are to be used for specific purpose in future. Okay, but they are different from restricted funds. In restricted funds, the donor gives the terms and conditions. 
here the NGO itself keeps aside some money for a specific purpose. Like you used to have general reserve and provision, this designated fund is that specific reserve. But restricted fund means there are legal restrictions or the person giving the money puts the restriction. Here there are no restrictions. If needed, you can use it for other purposes also. But NGO keeps aside certain money or funds for some specific purposes. Like they keep aside the money to construct a sports ground, then that fund will be used in future for sports ground only. But if required, they can use it at other places also. So that is called designated funds. So within unrestricted funds, which we three categories do we have? Corpus fund, general fund and designated fund. Okay. So keep this in mind. In general fund further, there are two parts. It can be in the nature of promoter's contribution. This is the, I told you, excess of income over expenditure every year will be transferred over here. This is that amount in the nature of promoter's contribution. And second is, Related to non-depreciable assets. Related to non-depreciable assets means, for example, you receive grant and donation related to freehold land. Write this in your notebook because we'll have it in the practical questions. If you receive any grant or donation related to freehold land, that is a non-depreciable asset. That is a general fund, but related to non-depreciable assets. Okay. That is a general fund, but related to non-depreciable assets. So these are the two main sources of funds. Now, what did I tell you? Instead of liabilities, we call it as sources of funds. So which are the other liabilities we will have in sources of funds? Borrowings and current liabilities and provisions. Recollect in final accounts what we used to have. Loans we used to have. Current liabilities we used to have. Same liabilities over here. So once again, in the liabilities, instead of liabilities, we'll give the heading sources of funds. Within sources of funds, four things. Unrestricted funds, restricted funds, borrowings, current liabilities and provisions. I repeat, within sources of funds, four things. Which four things? Unrestricted funds, restricted funds, borrowings, current liabilities and provisions. Within unrestricted funds, recollect which three things will come? Corpus fund, general fund and designated funds. Within general funds, in the nature of promoter's contribution related to non-depreciable assets. Now, application of funds means assets. So you all recollect which things we used to write in balance sheet on the asset side, fixed assets we used to have, investments we used to have, current assets we used to have, prepaid expenses we used to have, that is loans, advances kind of a thing. Same items we are going to have in application of funds. Fixed assets, investments, current assets and loans, advances and deposits. The only difference is earlier we used to show loans and advances in current assets only, now you separate it out. Loans, advances and deposits you show separately from current assets. So four application of funds, fixed assets, investments, current assets, loans, advances and deposits. Okay. So we'll see this items now in proper format. All of you make the format of balance sheet. Balance sheet of dot 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 NGO as on dot dot dot. Columns will be particular, schedule number, amount and amount. Pause the video and make this format. I hope you all are done with the formats. Now, very first, as we discussed, instead of liabilities, we'll call it as sources of funds. Write down in your notebook, sources of funds. Okay, I may go in a bit speed, but you all can always pause the video and write it down. Okay, so I'm just explaining the things and after it is done, you all can pause the video and write it down. Now, within sources of funds, four things we studied, we are going to have first, unrestricted funds. Within unrestricted funds, we studied three unrestricted funds are there. Like capital, we have corpus fund. That will be in schedule number one. It means we'll be making the working notes. They are called schedules. So the details of corpus funds will be showing in the workings of schedule number one. Then we will have general fund. Now, what did we study? General fund two parts in the previous page. Okay. Either it can be in the nature of promoter's contribution. This is which amount? That excess of income over expenditure, which is transferred every year over here. We'll show it in schedule number two in detail. And then we'll have related to non-depreciable assets. I give you that example, grants and donations related to freehold land that will come in schedule number three. And then we'll have designated funds, schedule number four. You all can pause the video and write it down if you have not written it. I'm moving further. Now, after unrestricted funds, which three more liabilities are remaining? Restricted funds, schedule number five. Borrowings, schedule number six and current liabilities and provisions schedule number 7.
Okay, borrowings means secured loans, unsecured loans. Current liabilities and provisions means outstanding expenses, pre-received incomes. All that will come in current liabilities and provisions. Creditors, if anything is outstanding to be paid, purchased on credit. So all those will be included in current liabilities and provisions. Then we'll get the total of sources of funds means liabilities. <clears throat> now instead of assets, what heading we are going to give? Application of funds. Which are the four assets we show over here? Fixed assets, schedule number eight. Fixed assets will include land, building, furniture, equipment, machinery. You already know that. Okay, we can show tangible separately, intangible separately. And there is one item called capital work in progress. Capital work in progress means, work in progress means kam chaluche. And in fixed assets, when we say capital work in progress means fixed assets kam chaluche. Partly or self-constructed fixed assets. Suppose you are constructing a building for your NGO of floor, four floors. Two floors are completed or one floor or three floors are completed. Remaining is still to be constructed. This is called capital work in progress. Okay. Half or partly constructed fixed assets. Then we have investments, schedule number nine. Then we have current assets, schedule number 10. And then we have loans, advances and deposits, schedule number 11. So four Sources of funds for application of funds. Which four sources of funds? Unrestricted funds, restricted funds, borrowings, current liabilities and provisions. Within unrestricted funds, corpus fund, general fund, designated fund. Within general fund, in the nature of promoter's contribution and related to non depreciable assets. For application of funds, fixed assets, investments, current assets, loans, advances, and deposits. And then again, now we take up with the format of income and expenditure statement. So again, all of you give the heading in your notebooks, income and expenditure statement of NGO for the year ending. Format same, particulars. Okay, format is slightly different. Understand it first, then you'll make it. Particular schedule number. Now here we make it in columnar form. We make columns of unrestricted fund, which is further divided in two parts. As we studied previously, corpus fund won't come here. So general fund and designated funds. Then we have restricted funds and then total. Now, one important thing to be kept in mind over here is we will be making this in columnar form only if incomes are given related to general fund, designated fund and restricted funds. I repeat, we will make the income and expenditure statement in this columnar form only if incomes are given related to unrestricted funds, means general and designated funds and restricted funds separately. If there is no such bifurcation given in the question, then we'll make two simple columns of amount in our income and expenditure statement, amount and amount, that's it. So these columns of general fund, designated fund, restricted funds are to be done only if in the question, the income related to these funds is given, which you will get clear once we solve the questions, okay? Expenses will never be related to these funds. Expenses will all come in last column only, total column. All expenses will come in last column, that is total column only. Only incomes are to be done in this classified manner. That too, only if specific information is given in the question. Otherwise, even for incomes, we won't make these columns. Pause the video and make these columns, everyone. Now, see, very, very simple. First, we show incomes, then we show expenses. Okay. For incomes, there are only four main incomes. So, no shortcut to be remembered. Four incomes. One is the main activity which they do. So, income from their operations like in Profit prior to incorporation used to have revenue from operations, here income from operations. Okay. The activities which they do, they generate income from that, there is income from operations. Now, whatever are the 10, 15, 20, 50 members of NGO, they contribute some subscription every year so that their activities can be carried on. 500, 1000, 1500 to be the member of that NGO. So that's subscriptions, fees and subscriptions. Okay. One is, one is income from operations, second is fees and subscriptions. They conduct various programs during the year for which they charge fees from the members. So that fees and subscriptions. Third, their major income is received in the form of grants and donations which they receive from the government. Okay. And other incomes. So four incomes are only there. No shortcut to be remembered. First is income from the operations activities which they carry on. Fees and subscriptions, grants and donations and other incomes. So all of you write down incomes within that Income from operation schedule number 13, sorry 12. 11 schedules we have seen in the balance sheet. So income and expenditure statement will start with schedule number 12. However, when we solve the questions, first we'll be making income and expenditure statement, then balance sheet. But the workings, 
schedules first we have to show for balance sheet debt for income and expenditure so when you write income and expenditure statement you'll start with schedule number 12 only because in the workings first we'll be showing for balance sheet therefore in understanding also first we have seen the format of balance sheet then second what did i say fees and subscriptions third what did i say grants and donations fourth what did i say other incomes okay whichever incomes don't fall in first three category will come in other incomes like interest on in investments dividends on investments okay all these come in the category of other incomes then we'll have total a total market as a total of incomes total a so if you are not done it pause the video and write it down i'm continuing further now after incomes we will have expenses okay within expenses very first is consumption of material okay now here you all remember one thing in profit prior to incorporation what shortcut did we study for expenses c d e f do you remember that one c was consumption of material d was direct purchases e was employees benefit expenses f was finance cost again d was depreciation and amortization o was other expenses six expenses you remember same shortcut so nothing new to remember in this income and expenditure statement c d e f do however c d d was direct purchases here we don't have direct purchases because ngo is not a trading organization they don't purchase and sell anything so you remember d don't have d don't have we don't have direct purchases means d there will be nothing but a new item comes in between administrative expenses which you will write after employees benefit i repeat c d e f do c you have d we don't have e f d o we have now new item d gets removed so new item will come which new item administrative expenses but that you will write after employees benefit okay so same shortcut of profit prior to incorporation let us follow c consumption of materials d we don't have e okay that is schedule number 16 e employees benefit expenses schedule number 17 now what is the new item you do insert in between administrative expenses schedule number 18 then again c d e f f finance cost schedule number 19 then do d depreciation and amortization we don't make any schedule i repeat for depreciation no workings is done as per the ngos law or act directly we have to write it in the income and expenditure statement the amount of depreciation then for other expenses we'll make schedule number so c d e f do c consumption of material we d we don't have e employees benefit expenses then we have a new item administrative expenses then f finance cost d depreciation and amortization o other expenses then again we'll do the total b now total of a was incomes b is expenses a minus b will give us excess of income over expenditure okay a minus b will give us excess of income over expenditure from that we will transfer less see you can see in yellow less transfer to designated fund and add transfer from designated fund okay so you remember if there is any transfer to designated fund you will minus if there is any transfer from designated fund you will plus i repeat if there is any transfer to designated fund you will minus if there is any transfer from designated fund you will plus Two minus from plus two minus from plus, and then whatever balance remains, that surplus will be carried forward to general fund. What did we study in general fund? There were two parts related to non-depreciable asset was second part, and first in the nature of promoters or owners contribution. What did I explain you over there? In the nature of owner or promoters contribution means excess of income over expenditure will be transferred over here. This. final surplus will be carried forward to that general fund and balance sheet so you all learn the formats properly in the next lecture we'll start with its practical questions okay that'll be all for this lecture take care bye everyone see you in the next lecture